In the previous lecture, we had started looking at uh, the concept of what is a set uh, mathematically. So, we looked at some examples and we said that to manage uh, things, uh, we put objects in a collection, uh, objects could be of different nature, different type and so on. But we said mathematically, if we want to analyze this collection, we should have it is a well defined collection of well defined objects. So, the question comes what does the mean well defined mean and what does uh, well, well defined collection means and what does well defined objects in that collection mean. So, to understand these uh, two uh, uh, the word well defined, uh, let, let me illustrate this by some examples. Uh, so, that we uh, are able to go ahead. So, let us look at, uh, so consider the following collection of certain color dots. So, they are color dots uh, given and uh, they are 13 in number, I hope they are 13 in number, let us count, yes they are 13 in number. So, uh, we are given 13 dots which are all colored and uh, uh, question is, do you think this is a well defined collection? Well, you are given the objects, right? So, it is a well defined collection, that is no doubt about it, right? So, this is a well defined collection of 13 dots. They are, you can imagine they are physically given you, uh, we have, you are given a physically uh, a box containing these uh, 13 painted. Uh, cardboards you can imagine. right? So, it is a well defined collection. Now, the next problem that I am going to uh, ask you is the following. Can we select red dots among these 13 dots? So, among this collection of 13 uh, dots which are colored cards, you can think of circular cards which are colored. If I ask you to pick up the cards which are red and separately put them in a separate box. So, think it about a minute and try to write down on a piece of paper your uh, solution. You can if you like, okay, you can just count for example, I may think this is red, this is red, 2 red, 3 and 4. I do not think this is red uh, according to my selection, your selection may be different, right. So, um, if you have, uh, if you are watching this video at home, and you are in a class where you have some other uh, persons also watching, you can play this game jointly and ask each one of them to pick up what is, how many red dots are there in this. And you will be surprised to find, you will find different answers from uh, different people. Hardly any two we may agree what is, uh, which are the, what are the number of red dots in this. So, uh, there is a problem. So, we have a problem of selecting red dots among the 13 dots. So, what does that mean? That means, the term red or the color red means different to different people. It is not well defined. If it is well defined means it should mean same to everybody, but different persons visualize what is red. So, among these uh, 13 dots, how many of them are visualized as red depends on the person what he conceives red to be. So, the word red is not defined. So, it is difficult to find out the number of uh, red dots in this. So, this is what not well defined means. Okay. So, this is what is called precision. So, uh, for example, we, if you want to analyze the consumption of electricity by household customers in a particular city you have a problem, you want to analyze uh, how much electricity is being consumed by household customers in a particular city. So, of course, a particular city that means, we have to first of all define what is a city. So, probably you will, uh, it, that is does not cause much of a problem, because a city means a well defined boundary uh, as per the corporation or the municipal corporation of that city. So, city is well defined or by the electricity department. Okay. What is a household customer? So, we have to define what is a household customer. So, probably that is also well defined. 
uh, namely if the electricity consumer that uh, the line or the meter electricity meter is in a house where a family or somebody is staying that is a household and it is not in a uh, place where there is a business being done or a shop or something. Okay? And then third thing is what is analyzing the consumption. So, we should be very well uh, aware of uh, what is how do you measure the consumption of electricity. And we have now very well devised uh, uh, instruments, uh, meters which uh, calibrated meters which measure how much somebody is using. So, here all everything seems to be well defined. To formulate the problem, we need the data. So, as I said, we will what constitutes a household that we have to make it precise what is the method of measuring consumption that we have to make it precise and we have to. Uh, so, uh, that means what? That means, they, nobody should be able to doubt whether what is a household if we have said this is a household and uh, there should not be any controversy or ambiguity in saying of measuring of the consumption of electricity. So, that is what well defined means. So, let us look at uh, some more example, all students who have registered for this particular course, of course that is a very very well defined collection, because we have their names, we have their numbers, email IDs and everything and uh, the office managing these uh, courses, they have their records. So, this is a well defined collection of all students who are registered for the course. All students in a school whose birth month is April, uh, that is we have a record of all students who are uh, registered in a school, we have their birth records and we can find out which one of them are born in the month of April, okay, well defined. All salaried person in a city whose income is above 50 lakh per month. Of course, uh, uh, here we have to understand what is a salaried person. So, uh, who is employed somewhere and getting a, a enumeration. Uh, every month or every day or something like that. So, salary should be well defined and uh, uh, income should be well defined what is the meaning of income. So, we should be very well able, we should be able to say without any ambiguity what does income mean and what does salary mean for a person. Then only we can do any analysis of such data. All married working couples in a city whose income is above 50 lakh. So, that also uh, is ok, seems to be a well defined collection. All income taxpayers in the city, well, so all income taxpayers probably we will classify who file their income tax returns, they are income taxpayers. So, is a very well defined collection. Set of firms in a city whose annual turnover is about 25 lakh. So, this uh, uh, this may be a bit difficult to uh, say which are the firms. So, this will only go uh, by some official records when they have the audited statements uh, of the firm, uh, yearly audited statements where this which is where this disclose how much is the turnover. So, if you go by that method of uh, picking up the firms then it is well defined. Set of goods a consumer can afford to buy normally it is called the budget set, meaning this is in the uh, uh, this uh, these kind of objects, these goods the consumer will be able to afford to buy because of his income or what. So, this is normally in economic terms is called the budget set of the consumer. The set of goods or services a consumer is physically capable of consuming is usually called the consumption set. Uh, for the consumer. So, these are the terms coming from economics and we want to analyze them, uh, make any study of these things, we should know clearly what is called the budget set and what is called the consumption set. So, what I am trying to show is how the nature of a collection of objects in a different context can arise to analyze different kind of uh, problems. Let us look at some more examples. We want to analyze uh, who are all the rich people in Mumbai. 
well can we say what is uh, who is who is rich who is not rich um, it seems to be a problem uh, in deciding what does rich mean can we say uh, can we go by the bank balance of that person or can we say how much property he owns and so uh, it is not a very well defined word that rich what is rich mean it is not very well defined okay because given a person we cannot categorize it as rich or non rich so this is not a very well defined collection okay so rich in mumbai is not very defined let us look at the numbers 2 4 6 8 and 10 here we are actually given uh, the collection we are given is box having the numbers 2 4 so this is a well defined we are actually given hold of those objects we don't have to pick up right so normally such when the actual things are given uh, it is well defined this is a well defined collection set of all students in a class whose name starts with the english alpha english letter a yes that is very well defined because we know how many which so which are the students in a class we have the roll list we can pick up um, according to the names which starts with a or not this is very well defined so naively uh, i hope we have understood uh, what is well defined means so a set mathematically a very naive definition of a set is a set is a well defined list or collection of uh, objects okay uh, of well defined objects so the collection should be well defined and the objects in each of them should be well defined so well defined we have not really given a mathematical definition of what what well defined means we have only tried to give you some examples which uh, illustrate uh, what well defined is okay so um, actually uh, this is a, a, a very deep rooted uh, philosophical uh, problem in mathematics in set theory itself what is a set and uh, we will not go into it in fact uh, in whole of mathematics one does not define a set set is something that is given to you only you manipulate things in a set so i will not go into it so intuitively we will understand uh, what well defined means so a well defined collection of well defined objects we will call them as set okay so we will uh, once we have defined what is a set it is a collection of objects so objects in a collection are called elements in that collection so there is a collection of uh, things so elements uh, there are objects in that collection so each object in that is called an element okay so there are elements these elements are listed in so how is it a set written we uh, use the uh, brackets the flower brackets and write down the elements inside we separated it out with commas for example let us uh, we have uh, um, natural numbers between 1 and 9 okay we want to look at all even natural numbers between 1 and 9 so we know that 2 is a even number 4 is even 6 is even and 8 is even between 1 and 9 okay so these form a collection and this collection mathematically is written by putting this bracket this is called a left flower bracket this is called the right flower back, uh, bracket so we put these two brackets opening bracket and the closing bracket and the elements the objects inside two separated from 4 by a comma 4 separated from 6 by a comma and 8 so this is how the set of all even natural numbers between 1 and 9 will be written mathematically one uses the symbol belongs to so when we want to say 2 is an element of this so we'll write this as 2 belongs with that symbol in this set for example if a is an element of a set we will write it as a belongs to a right so this is we are trying to now develop the language of set theory uh, in mathematics we will find this uh, coming um, become used becoming more and more uh, common uh, and english will become less and less used in mathematics because uh, mathematical language is very precise and it has only one way of interpreting so a set is written 
by this way putting in bracket and saying an element something belongs to the set A is written as A belongs to A. Right? And if something does not belong, some object does not belong, then you put a cross against not against belonging. So, B this means does not belong to A. So, B is not an element of A is written as B with this belongs with a cross does not belong to A. So, A belongs to A, B does not belong to A. So, for example, in that 2, 4, 6, 8, 2 belongs to that set because here is 2 sitting inside. So, 2 belongs, but 3 does not belong because 3 is not in this collection. So, we will write 3 does not belong to it. So, uh, this is a typo here, it should be saying that 2 is an element of the set while 3 is not an element of that set. right? So, it is very clear. So, this symbol is used A belongs to A, the element A belongs to A, but the object B does not belong to A. And one thing more, elements are not repeated in a set. For example, when we are represented a set, this set as 2, 4, 6 and 8, an element is listed only once, its presence is shown in that collection only once, not again and again. For example, we do not write 2 comma 2 again, right? only once is enough to indicate. For example, this 2, 6, 4, 6, 8 is not a valid description of the same set, because here we have repeated 6 in this representation. So, that should be avoided, that should not be written. So, elements when described in a set are not repeated. Right. So, let us go ahead a bit more and try to understand. So, in a sense saying a set is well defined, right? you take up an element S, there should be only one and one possibility of saying either S is inside that set S or that element S is not inside that set. Okay? For example, uh, in that example of uh, rich people in Mumbai, if I pick up a human being, right? I should be able to decide conclusively whether he is rich or not. I cannot say he may be rich or he may not be rich. So, that is what the well definedness amounts to be. So, for example, if f is the set of all divisors of 12, okay, so here you should understand what is divisor of something that divides 12. So, 1 divides 12, 2 divides 12, so 1 belongs to f, 2 belongs to f. 3 belongs to f and so on, okay. 6 belongs to f, 12 belongs to f. So, these are all divisors of 12, so all of them belong to f. But 8 does not divide 12, so 8 is not an element of f. Similarly, 9 does not divide 12, so 9 is not an element of f. Okay. So, this is how the language of set theory is getting evolved. A set is a well defined collection of well defined objects. And if an object belongs to it, we denote it by that symbol belongs. And if it does not belong, it is not in that collection where it has it by a slash does not belong. Okay. So, this is uh, set by description. right? So, let us look at some more uh, examples. A set is, let us, let us consider the set A is the set of all natural numbers between 2 and 9. So, what are all the natural numbers? between 2 and 9, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, we have listed all of them. So, we write A is the set which is equal to which is in the brackets, opening bracket, closing bracket, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so we have described all the elements. So, this is a set. Let us look at another set. V is a set of all vowels in the English alphabet. So, what is that? So, we know the English alphabet A, B, C, D and so on. In that if you have the knowledge what is a vowel, so you can pick up, we know there are 5 vowels and they are A, E, I, O, U. So, we know precisely how to pick up a vowel uh, from the alphabet, collect them together, put them in the bracket and that is a set of all vowels from the English alphabet. So, that is a well defined set. So, this is a set by describing. We are describing all the elements of the set explicitly we are showing you all the elements. The set of all divisors of 18, something we have done similar to 12. So, 
1 is a divisor of 18, 2 is a divisor of 18, 3 is a divisor of 18, 6, 9 and 18 all are divisors of 18. So, f is the set right. So, when we say consider the set f of all divisors of 18 we mean f equal to bracket 1, 2, 3, 6, 9 and 18 bracket close. So, this is how we write the set of all divisors of 18. So, this is called the set by description. Uh, let us note while writing elements in a set in the above method, the order in which the elements are listed is not important. So, one we said when you are listing all the elements of a set, you should not be repeating them, a element should not be repeated, it should be listed only once. And secondly, it is not necessary that you should be writing in the same uh, order which you think is a natural one. For example, the set 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, this is a set whose members are this. All members are equal. We, can, we are not saying this is the first member, this is the second member, 5 is the third member or so on or element of the set. You could have written this set also as 4, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8 okay, or 8, 7 whichever way. So, order of the elements when you are describing it is not important in which order they are written they all should be written and only once they should be written that is what it says. Okay. Right. So, for example, the vowels A, E, I, O, U, here we have written vowels as they occur in the alphabet from looking at A, B, C, D, so on, but I could have written it also E, I, O, U, A or O, A and so on. So, the different ways of writing the same set, they all mean the same set. So, the order in which the elements are listed is not really important. So, this is one method of writing a set where we are explicitly able to exhibit all the elements of that set. There is another method where we specify a rule for picking up uh, those uh, elements of a set. So, let me give some examples before we uh, write. The elements of a set are described with one or more rules. The rule could be one or more. For example, the set of all natural numbers. So, one way is I write n. So, this is by the way this is the symbol we will be using throughout our course for the set of natural numbers. This is n with a additional line on the side. So, this is called script n. So, this is called script n okay. and this will signify Whenever we you see this, this will mean the set of all natural numbers. So, what is the set of all natural numbers? 1, 2, 3. Of course, I could have written 4, I could have written 5 and so on, but we know that we cannot write all natural numbers, describe them explicitly. So, one writes 3 of them, 1, 2 and 3 and then puts dots to indicate that we go on doing that. Okay. So, this is one way of writing the set of natural numbers. Okay. Now, let us look at uh, the set of all integers. right? What are the set of all integers? This is normally denoted by Z, Z, capital Z with a additional line in between are also denoted sometimes by the letter I for integers. Uh, the symbol Z comes from the German uh, word called Zahlen calculation and uh, because uh, German mathematicians gave it first this name, this symbol. So, it is used very often or is used mostly actually I would say, but some of the books in school they use i for integers. So, what are integers? Integers are you look at all the natural numbers. Okay. Uh, here is a uh, typo here along with that you should also have uh, 0 inside it. Okay. So, what is the set of all integers? This is a correction here, set of all integers is 0 plus 1 minus 1 plus 2 minus 2 plus 3 minus 3 and so on. Okay. So, uh, that is the set of all integers. So, we can write x, x is an integer or write as plus minus n a natural number and I should be, I should be closing the bracket. So, there is a mistake here in typing. Okay. So, what is the mistake? The mistake is first it is okay. z is the collection of all integers and then I should be writing as opening bracket plus minus n 
this line indicates such that n is a natural number and or it should be a 0, n could be 0, 0 is also a part of the integers. So, that is uh, way of writing the integers. Okay. Right. So, let me probably uh, show it to you uh, writing on a piece of paper, what does integers mean? So, integers z denoted by z is equal to it is 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus 3 and so on. Okay. Or you can also write it as all n such that n belongs to n okay, plus minus n or n equal to 0. This is another way of uh, uh, writing uh, integers. Okay. So, either is good enough. So, this z is the letter which is used to indicate integers. So, let us go over to uh, next one. So, as I said this uh, when I write this way this vertical line means x such that that is how you should read it and understand. So, let us look at p. Okay. For example, p could be the set of all x objects x such that. So, what is x? x is the president of India between 1947 and 1960. Okay. So, this is one way and if we know precisely who are uh, these people, one can put their names in it and write it explicitly also. So, so in this method the elements of a set, so what is the roster method or the rule method of representing a set? In this method the elements of a set are listed in flower brackets and each element is separated from the next by a comma that is uh, the explicit method of uh, listing. right? Uh, these are ex described explicitly. So, this is explicit method of uh, description of integers. Right? Uh, so, uh, the earlier one when we said presidents in India between this year and this year. So, if uh, we remember correctly there is only one president that is president Dr. Rajendra Prasad. So, what we are saying is uh, a set is a well defined collection of objects one. And there are two ways of representing a set one by putting a flower packet and listing all the elements of uh, the set or describing the objects by a property. Okay. So, there are two different ways of uh, uh, writing whichever is convenient we should use them. Okay. So, we will stop here and uh, continue our discussion of set theory.